All right, hey guys, welcome back. It's springtime and it's time for tractor maintenance, right? Wait, no, it's still only February, even though it's 65 degrees out. Uh, but it is time to start thinking about it. Uh, so the topic for today is your hydraulic oil slash hydrostatic transmission oil, uh, which is the same oil uh, for subcompact. Uh, well, most, I guess, all subcompact owners, definitely Massey subcompact owners. Uh, so today I'm going to go through uh, some specifications, comparisons that I've pulled and some research I've done. Uh, just basically to, I've assembled it and I'm going to and give it to you. So if you just want to see that information, it's going to be up on the screen here in a few seconds and you can just see it, move on and have a nice day. If you want to hear me talk about it, stay tuned. So let's get started. First thing, if you've also, if you've made up your mind already about whether you're going to use an alternate brand or whether you're going to use the manufacturer's recommended recommendation, uh, which is typically the manufacturer's brand, uh, nothing in this video is going to change your mind, most likely. Um, but don't let that stop you from commenting below. I'd still like to hear, hopefully in a constructive way, much more constructive than the bickering I see on the forums. Um, I'd still like to hear, you know, comments if you have anything really, you know, really good to add uh, on top of what I'm going to present here. Um, and then the next thing is if you're looking for technical specifications, true technical specification analysis of oil and, and to hear from someone who's knowledgeable about the oil properties, this is not the video. I'm just going to talk about specs. Um, the video for you is up, linked up at the top here and in the description. It's a video Neil Messick did uh, a while back, and his uh, speaker in that uh, video much better than anything I could ever put together uh, because I don't know all that about the oil. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump right in here. Oil spec comparison. I, no, I'm not going to keep, keep you waiting any longer. I'm going to step to the side, and here it is. Here's the table that I've put together based on the research I have done. So I've attempted to attack this from three angles. One is compatibility from a, uh, the label. So what does it say on the back of the product? Number two, compatibility by looking at the individual specification categories. And number three, also looking at uh, the specs uh, in each of these categories relative to how they were tested. So in other words, ISO standard versus ASTM. Uh, so that's what's represent, represented in this sheet. And then to the right in the sheet uh, are notes from the best I could tell of really just uh, information about whether a particular uh, oil property uh, number, you know, is high good or is high bad, is low good, or is low, you know, bad, generally speaking. Uh, so I'm sure that's arguable, but that's just the quick research I've done. So this is several major brands. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight major brands, all side by side. So you can look at these and, and run with it. Now, for anyone who wants to stay tuned and, you know, listen to me talk about it, uh, let's get going. Um, so the first thing is, this is all really based on the Massey perspective. Uh, so if you're a Kubota or some, you know, RKA uh, tractor or some other model, this is not exactly geared for you, but the specs I think are, I mean, they're still applicable, right? Um, so what I've done here, I've broken down, you know, major categories and from uh, an, an AGCO perspective, uh, the question is, the first question is, have you found an equivalent to AGCO? Because that's what's in the manual. The manual says Permacharan 821XL or equivalent. And I would say that from a specifications breakdown perspective, none of these products are equivalent to 821XL because the term equivalent implies either identical to, equal to, or equivalent within a certain percentage or tolerance which is unspecified by AGCO. So I don't know, you know, how you could say it's, it's equivalent, uh, you know, 
in an absolute way. It's, it's an arguable point, right? Um, of course, what's the consequence? The consequence is if something breaks and there's a warranty issue and it comes down to oil, maybe there's some back and forth. Maybe that's a rare occurrence. Maybe that's a not even worried about it. I don't know. Um, but that's, you know, just from a specification standpoint, I don't see equivalence here. Um, I see some categories that are pretty close, but nothing that is truly equivalent. If I had to pick one that is, if I had, had to say, hey, which one of these is equivalent if you were forced to pick one? I mean, it kind of looks like Shell Rotel is pretty close. That's why I've grouped it uh, together there. Um, Amsoil, a uh, close second, um, although it's 5W30 instead of 10W30. And then Delvac, or, or it's also called Mobile Fluid 424, seems to be actually a really good value uh, given the specifications for it. Um, but I can't really tell the SAE viscosity, viscosity grade. Uh, it says 80W. Uh, so in the comments, please enlighten me uh, as to why that seems to be so different on the SAE uh, grade category. So then, so, so that's sort of the, the deal from the specification standpoint. Um, some of them is you kind of work your way to the right in the spreadsheet. Um, and I'll, I'll maximize this on the screen now. Uh, they're just not published. The, the, some of these uh, off brands do not publish these numbers or pu they don't publish them that I could find. Um, so what does that say? To me, that says they either vary widely or so widely batch to batch that you're not, sh they're not sure what you're going to get. And I'll say, I'll give you my theory on why that is in a moment. Um, or they just don't test to it, period. So they don't even know. Um, if you go, I, I'd just point in here just for, as an example. So you get someone who asks in the questions, hey, what's the vis uh, SAE viscosity grade of this oil? One of the FAQ, FAQ replies for Providence Automotive, uh, the RK uh, oil, was 43 pounds. So that's the weight of the five-gallon jug, right? That is not the weight of the oil. Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so my the here's my theory. My theory behind the question mark columns, question mark rows, is that these are specification categories that vary widely and they vary widely because you might have a batch of oil that gets mixed with additives and tested and tests on the high end for one category or low end for another. And so they set it aside and say, that doesn't meet Shell Rotella standards. So we're going to sell that to Traveler Premium and they're going to sell it under their, their label. Or we're going to sell that to Providence Automotive at a discount and they're going to sell it under their label. And that's how they get their price point down to 65, 60 bucks for a five gallon container. That's my theory. I have absolutely no industry knowledge, inside knowledge to, to, to substantiate that claim. Just the theory. Um, so now the second uh, category here is equivalent or equivalent to um, by label. So the labels are also a little sketchy on some of these products. So uh, if you look at like uh, Amsoil, uh, Amsoil shows uh, Permatran A21XL. That's great. That's exactly what the Massey is supposed to use. Uh, Mobile One uh uh, Delvac, the mobile fluid, says Power Fluid 821, which maybe is an alternate name, but it just kind of bothered me. It's not the most current name. Uh, so then you, you see Permatran 3, which is the, my understanding is the pre 821 XL fluid was called Permatran 3. Um, and then here's other references to Power Fluid 821 XL and the 821 XL. Uh, for some of these other off off products, so are they compatible? I don't know. Uh, if they would publish publish the specs, at least as a consumer, you would be able to look at it and try to make an informed decision. Um, and then the last kind of matchup category here is the testing methodology, which se seems to vary even between at least two of the major brands, Shell and Delvac, seem to use ISO or uh, ASTM testing standards. And they list their standard uh, method for each category, 
What that means, I don't know. This is not, I can't analyze that. Um, but they do, you know, list that. Uh, so what? So last thing, value. Uh, what does this all come down to? It comes down, to, I, I think, to value. Uh, if you get a $60 five-gallon jug of Delvac versus $124 gallon five five hundred twenty four dollar five gallon jug of permatran from agco yes you're saving money the right no question about that um but you're adding uncertainty into the equation that's that's what you're doing um you may be okay with that and that's why i put this table together because some people are going to look at this and say you know what i'm okay with that uh, that's not that much uncertainty for me to, to really even care about that. Plus my tractor is not under warranty anymore anyways, and I fix my own stuff. So I'm going to go do, uh, what I want to do and live my own life. And that's fine. That's fine. Uh, but Hey, at least you got some numbers now to, uh, put the, you know, put, uh, to your talk <laughs> or, you know, to your, you know, decision soon when people are saying, Hey, why are you doing that? You got some numbers now maybe to support it. Uh, so, uh, so I guess though, if you were going to look at the most superior fluid, forget price, it looks like Amsoil's the best, um, of all of them, but 283 bucks for a five gallon jug. Ouch, man. Whew. Uh, I'm not sure I would do that. Uh, so for my money, I'm just going to stick with the Agco. Uh, I'd really kind of like to try Shell Rotella, but it doesn't seem to be any cheaper it's actually more expensive so if you know of a place that sells it cheaper post in the comments uh i possibly would give it a shot so with all this back and forth about the brand of fluid and compatibility maybe we're missing the forest for the trees maybe there are other factors that are within our control that don't cost much more or less that can yield greater results um, be those being change your fluid more frequently, maybe, uh, check your fluid level more frequently. Granted, it's a little more difficult on the Massey because of the sight glass and it's kind of hard to read, but it's doable. Don't overfill your hydraulic fluid. Make sure your vent plug in the transmission cap is clear so it can breathe. Uh, maybe clean your a hydraulic suction screen more often maybe that would yield like that that's a zero cost item to pull that thing out clean it and put it back in well i guess you're supposed to change the o-rings that's a couple bucks uh when you do it but changing those o-rings and, and cleaning that off probably not a bad idea to do that periodically um so if you're in the camp of an alternate fluid, or if you're in the camp of the manufacturer's recommended fluid, uh, I would, my opinion, I would suggest thinking about some of these other factors that cost you nothing or virtually nothing uh, before you get too wrapped up in the brand of uh, hydraulic oil. All right, so that's my take on hydraulic oil. Um, I really hope this video spurs some comments and discussion uh, and feedback from others. I'm not a fan. I'm not in one camp or the other. Um, I'm probably going to stick with Agco just because of the pricing I've shown you here relative to the specs. I don't know that I'm going to be saving a whole lot over time, um, but I could certainly see someone going in a different uh, direction, and I would love to see your uh, feedback on that. So as always, thank you for watching, and take care.